opportunity. I'll be right there. Uh, kind of an entrance to the segment. Yeah, I, yeah. I heard your walk-up yeah. music you had playing. Yeah. <laughs> well timed. Oh, that's another good idea. <laughs> We're going to try and help you better understand this nine-game losing skid. Some perspectives, which some are good, some are bad. I mean, in some ways, this is as bad as it seems. Other ways, it's maybe not so bad. Also, some actual silver linings that we've seen throughout this nine-game skid. But the East got swept by Cleveland, then Tampa, then Minnesota. Amazing to get swept even once, let alone three times in a row. Uh, this is tied for the seventh longest losing skid in Oakland history, these nine games. It's also their longest losing streak since 2012. But wait, 2012 was actually a good season. It turned out to be. They also lost nine in a row that year. But shooting four losses of these nine have come by a single run. The A's have the worst one-run record in the American League at two and seven. You're always looking for a silver lining, if you will. Uh, the one thing about it, uh, even though you're losing, you're in the game. Right. Uh, you're learning how to win, and you're learning what that bad taste in your mouth feels like when you're getting your head bashed in. When you get to the major leagues, typically you're there to fill a role and go out there and do what got you there. Unfortunately, we're in an era where young men are learning how to play the game at the major league level, and the task is really difficult. We've got video, we've got audio, we've got everything to break down your weaknesses, and that's what's happening. Let's see if they can make some adjustments. I would say the frustration factor of losing that many games by these slim margins goes way up. I and mean, if you're getting blown out, that's one thing. But if you're almost right there and a couple things went different every night, you wouldn't be in this position. So here the A's are when this streak started. They had a winning record. Now they have a losing record. In fact, they are close to the seller of the American League. But check this out, Judy. I mean, to think that the A's and Tigers are where they are, that's fine. But Detroit is spending a ton of money, 16th overall in Major League Baseball. $136 million is what the Tigers are spending, as opposed to some of the other teams there. So money translating to wins or losses is not necessarily happening like you would expect. No, when you look at Detroit, now they just played the Houston Astros. They got swept five straight. They scored a total of six runs in five games, and they still came nowhere close to winning a ball game. And Houston even played that well. So it's difficult. You just can't, you know, money can't buy you love, you know, and it can't buy you a championship either. It could buy you wins, <laughs> but if you know what you're doing with those money, uh, those monies and those players, let me also say, say this the A's record right now at 10 and 18 if you pan that out to 162 games that would actually put them at 100 losses now we've said all along out of the gate this year the A's are not a 100 loss team and I still don't think they are as bad as their record and this streak indicates I really don't but we do have to say at this pace if something like this continued the rest of the way that would lead to a 100 loss season. Yeah, well, you don't need to be a math major to figure that part of it out, Brody, but I will consistently say this year is different than no other year that we ever have had. Getting preparate, prepared in your head mentally and physically for a 162-game season. Uh, you can't really compare the numbers to in the past because we're under different scenarios. Hitters are way behind pitchers right now. Uh, so I just, I just don't think you can judge things that are happening right now from what's happened in the past. All right, so there are some silver linings as advertised. So the streak, yeah, as bad as it seems, maybe not as bad as it seems, but here are the good things. Now, Christian Pache, old for his last eight, I get that. He's going through that adjustment phase of the book's been out on him, right? Had some early success. Maybe some adjustments are being made to him. He'll get his way out of this. Sean Murphy, okay, five for his last 45, but that's not the Murph we know he's capable of being. My point is, Two players we're excited for for different reasons. They've shown us something. They play critical defensive positions, and they're going to be the guys to get you out of there. Well, you talk about Pache, and we're talking about young player that's learning at the major league level. Not only that, he's coming over from the National League, playing in the American League, so he has absolutely no familiarity with these pitchers. And Murph, now he's a guy that has to carry a load. He is the dude. He is the guy. And you talk about Ramon Laureano, what other great thing about that is he brings some protection. He takes yeah. some of the load off of Murph. Here's a guy hitting in front of him now. He may get some fastballs. Murph may get out, you know, to hit with guys on base. So Murph is a dude, and I expect big things out of him. All right, there is another silver lining, and in fact, he's taking the mound tonight, Paul Blackburn. But we'll actually just talk pitching in general for the Oakland A's. And I'm not here to say that the rotation or the bullpen, either of them have been perfect, because quite honestly, they haven't. 
But what all the arms have done, generally speaking, is platform the A's the chance to win games. No question. Right? Now, the bats and the gloves, those things have not necessarily been putting the A's in position to win games. But the pitching overall has. Well, if you throw gas and if you can go out there and finesse guys, you've got a really good chance right now because hitters can't catch up with the gas and they're still working on the rhythm and timing. Frankie Montas is carving guys up. He's showing everything in his repertoire. If you can pitch, you got a chance. Let me ask you this. The fact that we're even here talking about an A's nine-game skid, they've had chances to get, get out of this. They've had late leads that collapsed. They've, they've lost one-nothing games where all they had to do was muster a few more hits and they would have been on the right side by a couple runs. This wears at the players, right? I mean, I'm not saying that they're counting how many this has been, but they are tired of this. They haven't felt winning in 12 days. It wears on everybody. Yeah. Anybody who cares about the green and go, wear the green and go, it wears on you because we're used to this club having success. We're used to this organization plugging in in the holes. We knew when they blew it up to a certain degree early on that it was going to be some labor pains moving on. We just got to see these younger players mature, get better, and understand that there is a bright light at the end of the tunnel. It's just going to be a long haul. So check this out. Between the two teams playing today, 14 straight losses. Somebody's going to feel really good after this one. <laughs> Well, you've got two equally matched clubs. Just say, okay. somebody gets to get out of this today. Well, let's hope it's us. Absolutely. That, that's kind of my point. No question about it. I mean, right. uh, you've got a new hitting coach. You've got a new manager. You've got so many new things. You're just waiting for all of it to come into place.